My name is Josh Vogel, and this is how I turn a raw log into a one-of-a-kind vessel by hand. This tool is called a roughing gouge. The idea with that is it's to take the bark off, but it's also to work on that concentric form. The beginning generally would be to try to find a cylindrical section. Initially, as you encounter something that's not concentric, a part of that may be what you're cutting, you know, initially, chunk, 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 and it can be fairly jarring. Once that's accomplished, the next steps would be to start using a bowl gouge to then try to find the outside form. As the turning becomes more and more concentric, we turn the speed up to facilitate the cutting, and the rhythm then becomes a little bit faster and smoother. What's the difference between wet wood and dry wood? That's a unique aspect of turning. If I can start with a piece that's completely saturated, before it starts to degrade, I can convince the shape to stay together. Wet wood is very unpredictable. It's a very old style of making things. I've thought a lot about what does the wood really want to become? What does it do a good job of? with the catalpa. The fact that it's so quick growing means that the expression and the tree rings are further apart. So the pattern that happens in it is much more dramatic than in a wood with closed grain. I think also the fact that it grows so quickly lends to its stability, which is different than a lot of tree wood material. It's actually quite stable, and you can turn these fairly adventurous pieces with it. I think, you know, back to the first time that I saw the lathe being used, it's totally a, a different tool than other woodworking tools. Table saw is not a very spontaneous tool, but the lathe specifically, it lends the ability to be spontaneous. Something about the reductive process, the shape revealing itself, it just really stuck with me. And I guess a love affair right from the beginning. That's definitely a give and take between what the wood will allow versus what kind of shape I'm trying to impose. You know, you hit a knot that you weren't expecting or a nail in a tree and, you know, something else jumps into the mix. The reality is the best work is a collaboration. It's not my imposition. It's, wow, look what that turned out like. Once I get to a point where the outside form is about where I want it, then I can work the inside to make it hollow. This tool is called an auger. The auger goes in to kind of spear it out the focus point of that spinning. Once that's kind of removed, it allows the hollowing tools to kind of get in and start their work.
This tool is called a hollowing lance. It's a straight kind of spear point tool. And on these particular pieces, as I start to try to hollow the inside and make the wall thickness consistent, the hollowing tool starts to take on a kind of bent aspect, which allows you to reach in and around in internally. Once I've gotten to a point where I'm fairly sure that the wall thickness is consistent, I can begin a finishing sanding process. That's a fairly simple, straightforward process of sanding. I think uniquely wood is a reductive material. By removing bits and pieces somewhere along the line, you've destroyed a perfectly good stick to make a spoon. A craftsperson's life is intrinsically about the creation of value, right? The transformation of raw materials is the essence of that. I'll take it up to a point where it's fairly smooth. The larger pieces then need to go through a process of curing. I wrap the piece in paper to cure. An enclosed form like that, for me, may take months to actually cure it. So I'll allow that to sit on the shelf then and dry out, closed up in the brown paper. Last step is treating the vessel with oil. I've been using linseed oil. And then it is complete. An important aspect of wood is, I think we share a temporal existence that's understandable. It's not like, you know, millions of years, it's hundreds. You know, we take a look at that log and count 30 years of life, right? It's easier to understand. Connection between the human being and the material is important, you know. How do you remove the obstacles in that? If I can get right down to using my hands, that's about as close of a connection as I can make. Trust myself, trust the material and forge ahead, you know, in the end, you can look back and there's the turning, there's the shape, there's the spoon. <laughs>